What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Ari. Welcome back to AM Island Vibe. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing alright today. We're back with another reaction video. Alright. Today we're back here reacting to the top 10 places to visit in the UK. You guys know I'm a Brit boy, you know what I mean? I'm a rude man, you know? I be doing mad peas, mad peas, mad, mad pounds, man. Man's get mad peas, yeah, man. You know me, I'm a Brit boy, I just don't be over there too much. Look, let me stop talking like that. <laughs> y'all know I'm a little British boy on my side, you know what I mean? Let me, let me stop playing it, y'all. <laughs> y'all know I, I'm a big advocate for the UK. I love the guys over there in the UK. Shout out to the people in the UK. Big up yourself, one love, respect, all that good shit. Tea and crumpets, yeah. But anyhow, you guys know um, I want to visit. Plan on visiting. Maybe plan on moving. Keeping the options open, you know what I mean? But yeah, so um, we're going to react to the 10 places to visit in the UK, alright? If you guys are new to the channel, man, you know how we do it. We always shrub the love, peace, life sign. Wait, I did it right? Yeah, you guys know how we do all rap, rap, rap it, rapping the life sign always. But, yeah. Hope you guys are having an awesome day, man. Sorry if I'm not looking at you guys. I'm just trying to get a set up and all that good shit. But, hey, let's get into it. What's up, guys? My name well, is Ryan Green I spent the last few years exploring the United Kingdom, and I want to show you my favorite places. Hey, sorry. Sorry for stopping. So UK, once I like, one thing I like about y'all, y'all shit green. I mean, like, y'all, it's like green, green. That's, that's, it's like a movie, man. So here's my UK top. See, look at this. Look at that. I've never seen that much green, no way in my life. The United Kingdom is made up of the countries of England, Wales, Northern Ireland, and Scotland. If you want to go back in time and feel like you're in a fairy tale or a Harry Potter film, the UK is the place for you. It's easy to see why so many myths and legends were born here. It's one of the world's most enchanting places. Alright, so for our first location, we're going to go visit possibly the most iconic city in the world, London. I've traveled more to London than any other international destination. I have to say it's my favorite city in the world, and I just keep coming hey, it's back. Expensive. Everything from the double-decker buses to the energy of Piccadilly Circus makes the city feel so alive. There's just so many places to see. You can check out the iconic Big Ben and walk across the bridge. Hey, you can people. There's just so many places to see. You can check. Right, I know this right here is Big Ben. This is Big Ben. What is all this other shit in the back here? No disrespect, but what all this other stuff is here? Like, what is it? And does this bridge have a name? I feel like this bridge have a name, and it's important. Let me know. Check out the iconic Big Ben and walk across the bridge to see the Palace of Westminster. There's the Tower Bridge, which is possibly the most famous bridge in all of London. You can go see the Stoic Guards at Buckingham Palace or take a ride on the London Eye. That's my cousin, by the way. Queen Elizabeth is my cousin. Um, she didn't she want y'all to know that, but that's my cousin. You know, we, we used to chill a long time ago, but you know, she got her power, so she started acting bougie and the family just cut her off, you know what I mean? But it's all good, it's all good, it's all good. So at least she let me keep my citizenship, so there's that. If you haven't already been to London, I highly recommend visiting when you can. It's hard to beat the London atmosphere. There's hey, sorry, no cap. Hey, listen, if you think your ball's heavy, the queen ball's heavier than yours, I swear to God. Listen, <laughs> no disrespect. The queen is a real boss. What I mean, a listen, you're a real ass bitch, give a fuck about a nigga. That's the, listen, that queen, that song was written about the queen. She don't give a fuck about you niggas. No cap. That's what you call boss. Get it right. No, so you like it in the real. Alright, so after oh, exploring shit. London, we're gonna make the two hour drive over to Stonehenge. Located in Wiltshire, England, lies one of the most famous man-made rock structures in the world. There's a lot of mystery surrounding Stonehenge, like what was its purpose and how was it made. Archaeologists believe it was constructed back between 3000 to 2000 BC. Stonehenge consists of a ring of rocks. You know, be some, you know, be some funny shit. Say like a hurricane or a storm, blow those rocks over. They just bring one green, put it back up. Yeah. Each being around 13 feet high and weighing nearly 25 tons each. 
It's unclear what the exact purpose of Stonehenge was. It's believed that it was used as an astronomical observatory or a religious site. Either way, it sure makes you stop and think how people thousands of years ago were able to construct this. Alright, so after Stonehenge, we're going to head on over to the Jurassic Coast. While you won't find any dinosaurs here, you might find some fossils on the beach. The Jurassic Coast is England's Whoa! world heritage site. Listen, if you drop off of that, you 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 dead. You dead. There's there's no Is that water or that's just no that's shore. That's no that's rocks. And you dead. And it's become popular with its white cliffs and picturesque beaches that are full of fossils from over 65 million years ago. One of the most famous spots on the Jurassic Coast is Dirtledore. It's this limestone arch that goes straight into the ocean. There's a great beach there and I just can't like a dragon. to spend during the hot English summers. One of my favorite spots on the Jurassic Coast is Old Harry's Rocks. Now special thanks to my friend David Rule for providing this footage. He has an awesome Instagram and YouTube that I'll provide in the description below. I remember the first time I saw his picture of this place and I was just baffled by the scenery there. The old hairy rocks are these sea stacks that are made completely out of chalk Beautiful. that mark the end of the Jurassic Coast. In World War II, the stacks were used as target practice for pilots. So that's kind of crazy. I just love the combination of the green meadows with the white cliffs and the blue ocean. I mean, it's just hard to beat that scenery. All right, so after the Jurassic Coast, we're gonna head up north to visit the country of Wales. Wales. Now, Wales is located is it, in the south. Question, is it Wales or Wales? Let me know so I can pronounce it right, because I pronounce it Wales. He said Wales. I feel like he's wrong, because Americans, y'all just jack up people name a lot. Fun fact, it's not Bora Bora, it's Pora Pora. Southwest part of oh, it's not. What should I say? Turks, Turks and Caicos. Caicos. It's Turks and Caicos, baby. Yeah, right. Britain. It's famous for its mountainous national parks, picturesque coastline, and distinct Welsh language. One of the most scenic places in Wales is the Snowdonia National Park. It's a region in northwest Wales. It's a pony. Mountains and lakes. The highest peak in Wales, Mount Snowdon, is located in the park with an elevation of 10,085 meters. You can hike on up there or you can oh, take the no. Snowdon Mountain Railway to the top. If you're lucky, you might be able to see Ireland across the sea. Alright, so after Wells, we're gonna head to the Isle of Man. Now, located in the Irish Sea, right between England and Ireland, lies a rugged island known for its rural landscapes and medieval castles. While it's technically not part of the United Kingdom, it has status of crown dependency, and the UK is responsible for its defense and external relations. The Isle of Man has had an interesting history. Humans have lived on it since 6500 BC, and in the 19th century it was ruled by Norway. But in 1266, the island became part of Scotland, and now it is a self governing island. An interesting place on the island of Man is Peel Castle. It was constructed by Vikings in the 11th century, mm -hmm. and it just sits right on the ocean, and it's a pretty cool cat. Sorry to keep it People feel, hey, you know what I learned recently? I thought Vikings were nice and friendly and cuddly. Vikings were savages, bro. Vikings was about that shit. Vikings was like the cartel for back then. Yeah. And them niggas was B. <clears throat> hey, Joseph, where's my big pork of meat? You know, them niggas died was freaking meat and potato. What the hell do you expect? And bail. Castle, if you ask me. All right, so after the Isle Man, we're gonna head across the sea to visit Northern Ireland. Now, Ireland is full of just beautiful scenery, dramatic coastal cliffs, and countless castles. Back in 1921, Ireland was split into Northern and Southern Ireland as a result of the Government of Ireland Act of 1920. While Southern Ireland became a free Irish state, Northern Ireland remained within the United Kingdom. The capital of Northern Ireland is the city of Belfast which is the birthplace of the Titanic ship. One of the most iconic places in Northern Ireland is the Dark Hedges. It's this road lined with beech trees planted in the 18th century. It was used as a filming location for the Game of Thrones. On the northern coast, wow. you can check out the Carrick Already Rope Bridge or see the basalt columns at the Giant's Causeway. And there's just so much history and beauty in Ireland. And she makes me want to go there and you can it. have a right, lot so of for history, next location man. we're to head to Scotland to visit the Isle of Skye. This is probably my you all time favorite place in the UK. You literally feel like you're in a fairy tale when you visit there. I was lucky enough to go to the Isle of Skye last summer and it's about a five hour drive from Edinburgh. One of the most impressive places in the Isle of Skye is the Old Man Store. It's one of my all time favorite rock formations. 
I felt like I was on the set of Game of Thrones when I was there. Now, to get to the old man store, it's about a four kilometer hike. You walk ah! through the observation gates and you reach the famous rock pinnacles. I went for sunrise and sunset, and both occasions were breathtaking. When I was there, there was just like crows flying around the rock, and, and there were some sheep running around. I mean, it was just a magical place. I am 21 years old. I've never seen a sheep. I've seen goats, I've seen llamas, I've seen mutton, I've seen, no mutton is meat, sorry. I've never seen a sheep. That's how basic, you know what I mean? I've never seen a, I've never seen a sheep. Yes. So the legend of the old man store is supposedly a giant not even never seen a long sheep time ago, and when he was buried, his thumb was left sticking out of the ground. Wait, wait, who that? A long, magical place. So the legend of the old man store is supposedly a giant lived there a long time ago, and when he was buried, his thumb was left sticking out of the ground. When you go there, it's easy to see why it's one of the world's most iconic rock formations. It's one of my all-time favorite places, and I recommend everyone to see it at least once in their life. Just a few minutes away from the old man store, there is a breathtaking waterfall called Meow Falls, that cascades down to the ocean. There's a nice viewpoint where you can look at the waterfall. The surrounding sea cliffs in the area are also stunning. One of the most famous is Kilt Rock, which are right by Meal Falls. And it's just such a cool area. There aren't many waterfalls that fall straight into the ocean. If you're looking to find some fairies, you may want to check out the fairy pool. So is it a fresh water waterfall or salt water? At the base of the black colons. When I was there, there were so many midges. I didn't dare get close to the water, so make sure you bring some bug spray. If you want to do a beautiful hike, I'd also recommend visiting the Kerrang. It's one of the most beautiful areas in the island sky. You feel like you're walking on a giant golf course. I found this crazy vantage point and you get a good 360 view of the whole area. Alright, so after the island sky, we're going to head over to the nearby Eileen Donan Castle. If you're driving to the Isle of Sky, you will drive right by this. It's one of my favorite castles in the UK. Situated on a small tidal island at the point where the three great sea locks meet, the castle was built in the 13th century. I was so mad at myself, I didn't visit the castle when I was there. I wasn't able to check it out. That's one of my biggest regrets of when I visited the UK, so don't make the same mistake I made. Alright, so after Castle War, to head over to one of Scotland's most iconic locations, Hogwarts. the Glenfinan Viaduct. It's located at the top of Loch Shill in the West Highlands of Scotland. It was completed around 1898. This may look familiar because it was featured in the Harry Potter film. Ah. I wanted to get close to the bridge so I walked underneath it. I was just shook by how big it actually was. After I hiked to the top to get a good vantage point so I could see the famous train go across the Vietnam. Just really reminds you of those Harry Potter movies. Alright, so after Glen Finan, we're going to head over to Edinburgh. Now, if you want to go back in time, Edinburgh is a must. It's where J.K. Rowling wrote her Harry Potter novels. When I started traveling, this was one of the first cities I visited. It's a medieval old town with intricate neoclassical buildings, cobblestone streets, and beautiful gardens. The iconic Edinburgh Castle overlooks the city and is home to Scotland's crown. I think it is the one that has stands there, in the middle of the street. I didn't go to the castle because I was being too cheap, but one of my favorite places was Calton Hill. It offers a beautiful view of the whole entire city. While we're still in Edinburgh, we're going to head over to Arthur's Seat. Now, Arthur's Seat is located in Holy Rock Park, and it's a short walk from Edinburgh Center. Arthur's Seat is an extinct volcano with an elevation of 823 feet. When I was there, I wanted to get as high as I could so I could see all of Edinburgh. I made a hike up, and I reached the top. It was just so windy when I was there, nearly blew me over. After I hiked to the top, I had a good time just hiking around Holy Rock Park and enjoying the views of one of the UK's most iconic cities. Alright, well that is it for my United Kingdom Top 10. The UK is just such a unique region in the world and it holds all the winners of beauty and history. What was your favorite place in the video? Let me know in the comments below. That was real beautiful, man. Beautiful. I know the UK was beautiful, but I was, I, I, like for, for land-wise, you guys are very beautiful, man. Love it. I really do. Really, 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 really. I really, 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 Stay tuned. Alright, but all that being said, man, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, man. Smash that like, wait, I did it wrong. Yeah, smash that like button, subscribe, comment down below if you guys want more, see more reaction videos. Let me know what you guys want to see. Follow me on Instagram. 
Just everything down below, my social media, all that good stuff, you know? But yeah, whatever it is, I hope you guys have an amazing day, man. Be happy, be blessed. Remember, the world is yours. Peace.